Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to paint this fun and easy fantasy painting. We're going to be using these three neon or luminous colors by Holbein. Luminous Rose on the left, Luminous Opera Pink in the middle, and Luminous Lemon Yellow on the very end on the right side. I'm also going to be using some Phthalo Cyan Blue by Liquitex Basics Acrylics. And I'll also be using some Black and White by Liquitex Basics Acrylic. I'm working on an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. I didn't do anything to um, prep the canvas. It's already uh, pre-primed when I purchased it, so it's ready to take the paint. And I'm just going to start this painting with a large number 50 filbert. Okay, the first color I'm going to apply is my yellow. I'm just going to add it right in the center area here. I'm then going to take my pink and I'm going to add it partially over that yellow. I'll take a little bit more and add it on this side. Then I'm going to take some blue and I'm just going to kind of wiggle it in a fun free way down here in the bottom left. Then I'm going to take some of the rose and add that down here. Take a little bit more of whatever is left on my brush here, combination of all those colors. And I'll just add it to the edges of the canvas, the sides. And then before this can dry, I'm going to take a large uh, mop brush here. And I'm going to take some white on it. It's dry. The only thing wet is the paint I just added to it. And I'm just going to go around and start blending softly, little circles. And when the brush gets a little bit too wet, switch over to a different brush that's dry because if the canvas and the paint's too wet, you might end up making a big muddy mess on your canvas. Now muddy, a muddy color isn't bad um, once in a while, but you don't want the whole canvas to be like that. We want to have these gorgeous vibrant colors here. So I've got another mop brush here. I'm going to add a little bit more white too and just add some softer pastel tones by mixing in to all these bright colors. So we have like a nice balance of the really bright neon shades along with some pastels. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is take another mop brush. This one happens to be an oval, but you can use any shape of mop brush. And I'm just going to start by adding a few little taps here. I'm going to tap in foliage shapes and then just create an intuitive landscape. This is the easiest way um, to create a beautiful and fun way to create a landscape. I don't really have like a name for these types of paintings. They're just kind of whatever you're feeling at the moment, whatever colors you're drawn to. And just little taps and lots of colors and blending until you start to see something take shape. Now we'll be adding a few little um, tree trunks. And then maybe right in here, we can add a little pull and sweep at the bottom and have a little waterfall area there. Now I've got a little bit of blue on my brush from going over that wet area. I'm going to bring that over here and apply a few more little waterfalls. And then just barely touching the canvas, gently pull. I think this is just so fun and freeing and very easy. So you can add these little waterfalls anywhere you want. And look at how much atmosphere we're creating already. It's such a fun way to create. And any age, doesn't matter how old you are, I've taught kids three to adults in their 90s, and they all enjoy this process. Okay, I'm going to switch over to a liner brush now. Any liner brush will do. And what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of my rose and a little bit of blue, some water, and I'm just going to start adding, maybe I'll add a little tree in here. Just gently pull, wiggle, 
Now the paint underneath, the paint on my canvas right now is really wet. So that's helping me glide and pull my acrylics out. And it's kind of like picking up all those other colors underneath too. This is a fun way to create as well. But if your canvas happens to be dry, you can still go over and add your tree trunk and your branches. Okay, let's add some branches, just twisting and wiggling my brush as I kind of drag and pull for some loose, hangy types of branches. Creating that feeling of an old, ancient, kind of fairy tale feeling forest. Okay, so I've got a large mop brush here. It's dry. I'm going to take just straight white. Don't overload your brush, otherwise you'll lose that soft puppy, puffy. <laughs> I have a soft puppy. <laughs> a soft puffy uh, end of your brush to work with. So you want to be left with very delicate looking treetops like this. So we'll just add a few like this and then add a few over on the other side. The idea is to just add to what's already there and don't completely cover up everything else. I'm going to show you this really, really neat um, trick with layering. Um, after I add a few more uh, little treetops and bushes. Okay, I've got a smaller one. This is an angle one. These ones are nice for um, smaller areas, narrower areas where you need to get in. So I've got a little area right here on either side of those waterfalls. I'm going to add a little bit of white here over top of some of that yellow in the center and then I'll take a little bit more of the yellow and just kind of add that around and then dab with some white right in the middle there. Kind of go around in a gentle circle and make a soft glowing sun. I'm going to take a little bit of pink, mix that with a white. And I'm going to add a few more little bushes up here, little bits of pink. A little bit of that rose mixed in. There's a touch of blue in there. That makes a really pretty color. Just a little bit of white. A little bit more white. A little bit of pink. So what often happens when I'm working on these intuitive paintings, uh, something starts to take shape and just kind of stand out to me. Right down here, I see sort of a curl here and it's the right colors for a wave. So I think I'm gonna go ahead, go with that kind of feeling I'm getting from that a little bit of white on my filbert brush. And tap, tap, tap. And create a soft little wave that comes down there. And taking a little bit of yellow, blue and white we can make turquoise. The shade of turquoise will depend on the amount of white, blue, and 
yellow you're adding. Right in here, I'm seeing a little, maybe a little window or doorway. So I'm gonna take a little bit of white, pink, and yellow. I have a little fairy door or entrance way, a little secret entrance way there. I go over to one of my round brushes, take a little bit of white, and this is a number one round brush if you're curious. And I'm just going to tap in a little bit of the foamy stuff on the top of the wave. And then do a few little bumbly lines like that. I like to come right underneath where it's brightest and add some shadows. So just a little bit of blue, whatever color you want. I'm going with blue and I'm going to layer over part of this pink here with that blue. more waterfalls or layers over my waterfalls so back over to another filbert brush a little bit of white and right off the top and we'll have another one drop down here I'm going to take a little bit of that turquoisey color with some white and pull that over here. It's just so much fun creating all these layers. So this pink in here is kind of reminding me of maybe a little staircase veering off there. You guys know I love my staircases. I always add them where I can in a painting. I'm just going to take a little bit of yellow, like more of a kind of an earth tone here, something a little bit muddy, yellow, blue, rose, a little bit of white, some water. Just have a little indication of some stairs there. Okay, then I'm going to go in. I'm going to take a little bit, well, I meant to take only a little bit, black and my neon yellow, a little bit of white, soften it. Uh, 
add a little, a little bit more earthy, mossy green in here. And then I'm going to take white and yellow. A little tap. And then pull. So we just want to add some soft sunlit highlights here. And I've just added a little bit of water to my paint, to my brush, thinned it out slightly. So I'm going to create some smoky, earthy tones going over some areas of the paints here. So you can glaze over and create a little bit more depth by doing that. I'm gonna go back over to my black and my green. Well, yellow, but it kind of looks green. doing is just adding a little bit more depth here in shadow on these steps. And if your paint is too wet, I have a difficult time adding that paint and leaving it on there. a little bridge takes us down here take a little bit of white and yellow on the tip of my brush that bridge. So it's all fantasy, make-believe, dreamy-like. So you may not see everything you would see if it were realistic in real life. Like where does the bridge start? Where does the bridge end? Why is the sun right there? It's not supposed to make sense. This is supposed to just free your imagination, your creativity, get all those creative juices flowing and Kind of escape through a paintbrush, canvas, and colors. Back over to my number one liner brush, Neon Rose, Phthalo Cyan Blue, and Water. I'm going to go over this tree trunk now and add a little bit more depth to it. Now the cyan. Phthalo blue, any phthalo blue that I've ever used is really, really um, dominant. So it takes over any other color that you add to it if you're not careful. So make sure you're just using less of the phthalo blue and more of the other color. Otherwise, it's just going to look all phthalo blue. I'm just coming in along the edge wherever I want and just twisting and rolling my brush the same way I did up here for these branches and adding some more
So it's kind of fun to have a few branches lower down the tree trunk too. And then I like to add a little bit of um, moss to them, kind of just hanging. It also helps to set all those other things in the background, like our pretty waterfalls. So you get to decide through layering what you want to be in the background or in the foreground. I'd like to add a little railing coming down here. I'm going to use another little uh, round brush here. This one's pretty small. And I think I'll take a little bit of yellow and black again. A little bit of water, just thin that out slightly. You won't have to do that if, depending on what kind of paint you're using. I'm using heavy body, they're really thick, heavy bodied acrylics. We'll just start adding some little lines up top there that start to disappear because they're getting farther away. And then we're going to come down here and make taller ones. And then what I like to do is just take a little bit more water to thin the paint out even more. And I just come around and add a little railing like this. So you don't have to push very hard. You should have, you shouldn't have to if you have your brush loaded correctly. There's something you might just need to practice with a little brush like this ahead of time. I'm going to add with a clean brush, a highlight, a little white, a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to add a highlight over these ones, kind of make them look like they're a little blurrier and farther away. And then a little bit more. Black and yellow to the left side of them, down here closer to us. I've got a few small mini mop brushes here. I'm going to add some moss and, and stuff on the side. And I'm going to take a little bit more black, a little bit more yellow. Blend the two together. And I'm just gonna start along the edge here where it curls around. Add a little bit more yellow. The black is really strong. We'll soften that after. So I'm gonna tap kind of side to side like that. And I'm also and I pull and flick downward to make it look like we've got some vines and hanging moss. And then maybe just add a little bit down there around the base of our bridge and the base of our little entrance way, have it kind of curving up over. And a little bit in there. I'm going to take a little bit more of my violet.
here, then a little bit of white, yellow, black. So it's a very sort of muted green now that we're just going to add a little bit more on top of the dark base that we used. Now the trick's making it look like it's just disappearing up there. I'll take a thinner brush, just a mini little flat brush here. You can use a liner or a, a round one as well. This paint is still wet. And I'm just going to pull and flick off like that because then it just gets skinnier and skinnier. I'm going to go straight down. A little bit of so my paint is starting to dry in the canvas so I just picked up a little bit more of my yellow black mixture and just slide and pull my brush down I'm going to take a little bit of white with a clean brush here, a little bit of pink, mix that up together. You make that look a little bit more faded back there. Okay, then what I want to do is add some pretty flowers. So I'm going to take a little bit of uh, rose and upper pink. Now, if you don't have neon paints, you don't have to have neon paints to follow along with me. You can use any pink, purple, magenta that you want or that you have. It's all going to be really pretty. Uh, it's just a personal preference choice. I decided to try some neon paints a long time ago. I started out with those little craft bottles. By the way, those are completely fine to use. Um, I do recommend uh, the Americana or the Apple Barrel rather than the Craft Smart. The Craft Smart is more for kids. They're a little bit uh, too transparent and watered down and you can't do a whole lot with them. Um, so if you're going to use craft paints, I would go with those two that I just mentioned and suggested. But I started out using those a long time ago, and then I discovered the whole body, and I really love them. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of white now to my pink. I'm just going to use the corner of my brush like this. I'm going to steady my hand by placing my pinky on the canvas like this, making sure that I'm placing it where it's nice and dry. And I'm going to add little dabs over part of those uh, flowers. This will give me a few more tones to these flowers so they don't look flat because you want to have the light will be hitting them different everywhere and you're going to have some lighter areas and some darker ones and that's how you can make your images. 3D and more lifelike. I'm going to go over to another small filbert brush. Um, this one's a number eight and I'm going to take a little bit of a little bit of white, a little bit of water, mix that up on my brush. Make sure your your paint isn't too watered down or it's going to not show up when it once it dries. And then a little wiggle, 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 wiggle down there at the bottom. I also want to have uh, a little bit of moss hanging there. So I think I want to add some purpley, pinky moss hanging down. So I'm just going to dab, tap, 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 pull, little pulls and flicks.
So something I wanted to show you guys is once you have your paint layers dry, you can uh, go over and add a glaze. And I'm just gonna um, choose here what color I wanna add. So I'm thinking, um, well, I do have a little bit of turquoise. I've got some turquoise here that I could use. Um, and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of my phthalo blue. You're gonna need just a little bit of water on your brush so that it thins the paint to make it even more transparent. And you can pick an area or areas that you wanna glaze over. And it's completely up to you. This is how you can create those iridescent looks in a painting. See how pretty that is? We have all these colors applied in a way that I think that it looks quite pretty. Now it's different for everybody. Some of you may have liked the way this painting looked um, five layers ago. <laughs> um, but I like to have these painting therapy sessions and film while I'm doing it so that you guys can see what will happen if I take it a step further. And it's also just really fun and therapeutic for me. So I'm gonna add a little bit more phthalo blue around the edge here. I've got another mop brush here and I'm going to take a little bit of white, a little bit of turquoise. See, I think that'll look really pretty right in here over that pink and a little bit over the blue. And you just, you can't go wrong with these colors. Pastel colors all look really pretty together. Looks really pretty, the mint, this mint turquoise color with that kind of periwinkle, purple and blue. And then if you want it to be a little bit brighter, I mean, you can decide once it dries, you'll know if you want it to be a little bit brighter. And with acrylics, it's so, they're so versatile and, and easy to layer over. You can just keep going and going. Okay, so I'm seeing another area in here that I'd like to add a little bit to. Just gonna take a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of Halo cyan blue and a little bit of white. I feel like I just want to add a little bit more here, a bit more to this waterfall, make it glow a little bit more by applying more turquoise, and then ultimately some more white. That white will make it pop and glow once it's um, all dry. And just a little bit, swimming over. Just 
Dip a little bit of pink and white to add inside there. A little bit more pink. And some more flowers. You can never have too many flowers. More rose and pink with just a hint of white in there because I don't want it to be really bright. But I don't want it to I don't want to risk it drying because um, they are transparent without white so um, it's a dark base underneath so it'll end up just turning that color it'll just disappear I'm going to take a little bit more white, tint it just a little bit with that pink. And just soften those flowers. Okay, a little bit just white now. Go over and add a little bit of neon pink now. A little bit more yellow. Hope you guys are enjoying this painting. As always, I'm happy to read your comments, so feel free to leave a question or a comment below if you have one. Just adding the last highlights here, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of yellow and pink and white. I'll add a few more branches just before I call this one done. I'm going to take my liner brush again, a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of water and rose, maybe a little bit more turquoise. Soft little pulls and flicks. 
You don't need a lot of paint on your brush. See how thin it is with water? And if, if it's dripping, of course, then you've got too much. Add a few little dabs of turquoise down here. It can look like little cool shadows for leaves. And what I like about doing this kind of towards the end of a painting is it's the final layers and once it dries it's going to have a texture to it and I love that. And then you can also take it a step further and dab a little bit of that Thalo blue in there. Now whether you use Thalo cyan or regular Thalo, it's very, very similar. So you can't go wrong. It doesn't matter. Go ahead and just use whatever Thalo you have. And you know, I always like to give you as alternatives. So if you're watching now and you're thinking, well, I don't even have any Thalo blue, what can I use? Uh, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue. You can add a little bit of um, phthalo green to either of those with a little bit of white even and create some beautiful um, emerald shades and uh, all sorts of gorgeous blues and greens by doing that. So I want to thank you guys so much as always for joining me. I love being able to bring these um, unique intuitive paintings to you guys from my studio. I have no um, pre-planning ahead of time, no pre-paintings. This is just done on the spot for you guys and I kind of take a chance doing this but that's what makes it fun for me. I love that and I love sharing it with you. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to my channel for more and you can also join Patreon for extra content and special tutorials over there and gifts. I'll see you guys soon in my next video. Take care and enjoy painting. Bye!